Now we're up to a unique piece, the knight. The knight is the only chess piece that can jump over other pieces, but it can't go very far in one leap. It moves in an L pattern, two squares in one direction and one square in another, or step, step, side, as my mother puts it. So if the knight is here on d5, it can move to these squares, step, step, side, or step, step, side. It's also interesting to note that the knight always moves from a light square to a dark square, or vice versa. Because of its counterintuitive style, sometimes the knight can be confusing. So let's look at a graphic that might help you out. In this graphic, you can see how many moves it takes the knight to reach each square. If you click on that square, Chess Master will play out the knight's path to reach it. By watching these movements, you'll start to become familiar with the flow of the knight. One thing you should notice is that the knight on d5 takes four moves to get to b7 or f7. Diagonally with one square in between is very far for a knight. So you can be very close to a knight, but safe from attack. A knight is very good in a closed game because it can jump over other pieces. We also want to find outposts for the knight. An outpost is a square deep in the enemy camp that an enemy pawn cannot attack. Click on all the squares defended by the knight. The knight can cover eight squares when placed in the center of the board. Good job. It's very important to notice how powerful the knight is in the middle of the board. The center is a theme we'll keep on coming back to throughout this academy. Now in this position, touch all the squares the knight attacks. Good job. The knight can cover four squares on the side of the board. Of course, you remember the knights touched eight squares when in the center of the board. Now in this position, click on all the squares defended by the knight. Exactly. The knight can only cover two squares from the corner of the board. So the knight in the corner covers two squares. The knight in the side covers four squares. The knight in the center covers eight squares. We always want to centralize our knight. And this holds true with most of the chess pieces. Centralized pieces can go right, they can go left, they can go up, they can go down. They can go everywhere. With the knights, my first teacher used to always tell me, a knight on the rim is grim. It's a good way to remember to centralize your knights. This exercise will be good for training visualization. How many moves will it take the knight to get to g6? That's right. In this position, how many moves will it take the knight to get to b1? Good job. How long will it take the knight to reach the g3 square? Good job. How many moves will it take for the knight to reach a8? Excellent work. The most common weapon of a knight is the fork. Do you see how the white knight can attack all of black's pieces if moved to the appropriate square? Good work. Knight c7 check. You can attack all of the black pieces. What is black's best move? Here we see that black has two possible forks. Play the best one. Good job. Knight b4 check wins the queen. When deciding between two possible forks, always go for the most valuable pieces. In this position, you can combine the bishop and knight to mate in two. That's right. Knight h6 check forces the black 